Oregon board or cafe, Ying as an operator can always turn a rough attack or into a great one or turn a good attack into an excellent one with a key finishing blow with some of those Candelas. Also had the Nomad ban earlier on from Beast Coast. Uh, not too sure what the final op ban was just yet, but either way, I'm sure we're getting the cafe. Once these teams have their setup figured out, and indeed we have the Valkyrie as the final ban from East Coast. Uh, makes sense for Cafe, but we do have the Mira up on one of her better maps. Alright, well, mid-floor here for BC to start Bravo, us off, to be expected when we roll into Cafe. My personal favorite site on the entirety of Cafe, just because there's a lot of different things you can do with it. I especially enjoy how the top floor is held, a lot of fun team play around this, and a good delay structure, too. That that uh, usually ends up playing into, like, my favor when it comes to uh, site setup. Really like those kind of sites. You know, same thing with what we saw in Consulate, where it's more split floors, and you can kind of play that top area to delay things things out and give the offense a little bit of an issue. Usually leads to some nice picks or just some good delay overall with your utility. We'll see how Beast Coast are able to manage that. It's Mirage are now out of the gates and on to the field. And speaking of on the field, Vertical, most important out of all of these. And uh, you can say that about a couple of names, honestly, across the board for Mirage over the last couple of days as uh, they have been doing the exact opposite of what we're used to Mirage doing. They've been looking very, very good, actually. Thanks. Well, uh, maybe a Mirage Claymore? <laughs> I was, uh, I was, well, I was about to say, like, I mean, I want to, want to give a lot of credit to the Mirage players, but, uh, Spyfer did, or Spyfer, Spiker did an excellent job at, uh, holding whatever his secondary gadget button was, then holding Mouse 1, and walking away. And it's resulted in the, uh, first kill of the round, Spiff being the man to go down. Again, Thorn Gadget's already placed, but you've lost a key 1.5 for the defense and maybe somebody to get aggressive. Beast Coast strengths, though, that persist through the middle game right now will be those toxic canisters or the shotgun, but specifically Mr. B on that pulse. You see him running about inside a train, likely finding intel on players like Vertical who want to push up the Whitehall later on in the round. But for the moment, will find themselves inside of Christmas, just holding and waiting for an opening. All in good time. Halfway through the round now. Beast Coast doing their due diligence when it comes right. to the info game. You can see Mr. B occupying that cardiac sensor. Seeing what he can try and find across his top floor. He's found one over towards New Valk slash Cigar. It's going to be Kansan, actually, on Bana. Open up some of the panels for cocktail on the top floor. Beast Coast do still have some members Going around to here. It's going to be Hat in the Smoke of Doc. They'll try to stick around for as long as they can, apply some more panels and things along those lines. Hat's life is quickly coming to an end if he does want to stick around here inside of Stacks, as that window play usually does end up spelling disaster for this player, and it will again. Spiker will take him out. Kansan will go down. He was that player over in the cigar position we touched on before, and as of right now, three versus three is it's kind of hell in a handbasket. Everybody finding their own pick through really their own means, and that being exemplified by whatever the hell we just saw Doc do. <laughs> right out of a white window, I believe, is what you were trying to diagnose, but Mirage don't seem too fearful about it. Not really worried all that much. Swanthy has walked into the default plant spot inside a reading. Rampy's picked up the case instead. Nobody from Beast Coast really all that aware. Sloppy firing some shots, but no retake just yet. The angle's working perfectly for Mirage so far. Doc now decides to commit to the retake of the top floor. No one, well, definitely knows someone's around on that close angle. No shotgun needed. SMG 11 and a kill for Mr. B2. That's what Sloppy alone in the one versus two. That was one player is up above, but the other player's position might elude him. Not for the defense, though. They've got the default cam in red spotting him. And as he goes for the retake, Doc, oh, shut down on the vertical angle. But Mr. B does not fake and does not fall off. You can see him clutching his chest after that one. That was very, very cold from Mr. B. Woosah. Remember your pressure points. Just breathe. What a round from Beast Coast. And by the absolute skin on their teeth, too, Lynx. As he trusts his man upstairs, and why wouldn't you? Good cover on that. Unfortunately enough for that top man, loses the gunfight, but is able to delay long enough to get the defuse through. The defense will win things out after Mirage are able to force down a plant inside of reading on default. Especially uh, after uh, what was an overall decent clear from Mirage and then a good read to push into the bomb site once they establish that vertical control, even in an even 3v3. Able to recover that in a 
clutch 1v1 at that point. Good for Beast Coast to start when I move down to the kitchen bomb site, which I usually tend to agree with you, reading as one of my favorites to watch. But I think if we, if you have a team that is very good on the roam, or specifically very good even at holding extensions and coat check and bottom white stairs inside a VIP, this can also be a very entertaining site if you've got a of, if you've got a defensive team that knows how to hold down those power positions. Yeah, and it can make for some really entertaining rounds. There's been uh, quite a few just rounds in Siege history on this particular site on Cafe that bubble up to the surface whenever I think about some of the craziest rounds that I have ever seen. I mean, one actually in recent history as well with Fox A on that uh, Clash Clutch. That's to this day one of the wildest things <laughs> I've ever seen done with a shield, and it just happened last week, you know? So uh, even now at year eight, almost year nine, there are still things happening that people that have played this game from beta links are still being surprised by, which is one of the coolest things you can say about a game at this age. Start. I'm certainly not surprised by the direction the early round is taking Mirage or just opening up some of these windows cutting off the white stairs Vertical same exact spot. He was in on the previous round repelling into Christmas moving through that second floor I mentioned that sometimes we'll see teams go for a deeper roam on kitchen a bit of a looser roam around that second floor not today all five defenders playing around that clash, but also playing inside of the VIP and the coach check positions. Though Had has rotated out of the ladder to support the defender playing inside of VIP right now. Likely a good move. They've got the clash to do a similar job to what Hat was accomplishing. And now the Doc playing in that position on the bottom of VIP stairs now has some key support in case anybody starts pressuring him very early. Reloading. Nice little take there from Rampy. Beautiful. That's that 4D chess we talk about in Siege. When you first start learning this game, you're learning all the fundamentals about how everybody goes about doing things, right? And that's like your first almost like thousand hours of gameplay. It almost feels right. And then past that, you go off into the ether, that theory land where people start doing things to bait actions out of other people and things along those lines. That's where Siege really, really starts to define itself. Nice little play out of Rampy there. Obviously it doesn't bait too much out, but Always nice to notate those little micro plays that people go for. <laughs> Ramp Dog finding the clash from behind. I didn't hear it too well, Link, so you can tell me if he skeleton, uh, skeleton keyed that right before oh, yes, he, he hit did. it. But man, what a shot out of him. And again, some creativity bubbling up from Mirage. Also, Hat now down too, so Mr. B might be gone, but this oh, player knows oh, Spiff. Oh, it's all lining up, Spiff! <laughs> Three players standing in a row. He turns to the right and cuts down the fourth. He might have been talking about Rampy. He's certainly shutting down the conversation over on bottom VIP, but he's got only 10 seconds to recover the diffuser. Huge play by Spiff to seemingly tie round two up for Beast Coast, but does Rampy have it in him to clutch a 1v2 in five seconds? No, he does not. They say I hear that Spiff does not whiff, and when three players stick their heads in a row, pretty hard to miss a shot. Oh, Cafe Kitchen's usually cooking up something like we were touching on, right? And once again, we have a round on Cafe Kitchen links that we're probably not going to be forgetting for a while. <laughs> Insane Uzi play from Spiff there. What a round. And uh, yeah, I'm going to log that one in the memory banks for good keeping. <laughs> very, very solid play from Spiff. And it's unfortunate because Mirage had a very, very good clear lined up right there. They took down the Clash that was supposed to be stalling for time over on Red Stairs, and they took out the guy who was supporting Spiff's position, who was holding the Brown Stairs, which the fourth guy Spiff killed, that was the guy that Hat was supposed to protect, or protect Spiff from. Then once Mirage shut that down, it was all so easy. Just deal with the thorn behind the shield. She's so alone, the rest of her team is inside of the bomb site. And what happened? Well, sometimes... Things line up perfectly for the defense and not for the offense. Spiff just happened to be at the right place, the right time, with the right weapon in the right hands. 2-0 now for Beast Coast, winning both of their defenses in miraculous fashion, but very different methods. Attackers well, are you out can't lack, or uh, rather slander them for their lack of creativity, rather. All right, so I can we'll see if uh, they can continue on with it. They do have train now ahead of them, which is one that can definitely present a couple of different issues, especially when it comes to Christmas. So we'll see how they try and remedy this. 
Mirage specifically can also, if they want to, when attacking Mining and Dining, can also go up the red stairs. Instead, go for a bit more of a direct take, and if they want to clear the top floor, just take control of Christmas and Cigar before moving down below. It's the more minimal way you can attack this bomb site. Otherwise, if you want to go for a bit more of an extensive clear of the top floor, then it's often pretty similar to reading and fireplace, except, of course, moving down into reading for a plant. You take control of this top floor, then use it to pressure the defense from the white stairs position, get a lot of verticality to shut down red hallway, maybe even look into dining, depending on the angles you're able to open up. More so, find angles on what surrounds the bomb site in a little bit, in case of a train, which is in between the bomb sites, kind of what's in it. Mm -hmm. You can see Mirage are very well aware of this. I know that this top floor, you don't need every single piece of it in order to force a plant on this. You really just need to oversee Christmas, but as with the strategy of Beast Coast, they know exactly what the site needs, and they will try and remedy that. There'll be some freezer pressure here from Hat that Mirage will have to try and deal with before attempting to rip up these floorboards. And we do have some other creative ops in the game nowadays where they couldn't go about that in more of an autonomous way and oversee it, but Ram hasn't been brought here. We're still going about this and more of the traditional light with Sledge being brought. And Spiker's going to get tagged up just a touch on his entry. I don't know if that was from Tristan or what have you, but I'm sure that we'll find out soon enough. You can see the rest of Beast Coast starting to fall off on the white stairs too, so it's crunch time for both of these squads respectively. Whenever both sides are in crunch time though, in 5v5, it's still on the attack to try and make up that effort, trying to push forward, try and find their own openings. Rampy is doing that. He's found the long bar, but Spiff has found cans and peeking through the vertical holes inside of the long bar. Hibana's already really done her job at this point, so losing that utility, not that not that big of a loss, but 40 seconds left, the attack just now finding themselves in an untraded 5v4. Spiker would be hoping that if there's a defender, which there is, and we know, lurking down below, that maybe Tristan will rotate in front of him. Equalize the man count, but Spiker also on low HP. If Tristan Attackers doesn't move, it's just a permanent man Attackers and HP disadvantage from Mirage as they are trying to get a plant down inside of mining. They have the angles to do it, but Beast Coast, if they can just play their trades, they're in extremely good positioning. Rampy, one grenade. Will he make it two? Yes, he will. There's an angle watching that very hatch drop. Nothing bears fruit with those grenades, but Vertical moving on in. He's able to find one, but not before. Spiff again able to completely deny the players playing inside a mining. Rampy left alone to pick up the pieces two rounds in a row. Doesn't die this time, but it ends just the same. Seven kills through two rounds for Spiff. And I mean, that's really all you need on your team to really get anything over on any squad. That's practically all of the team that you're playing against in two rounds covered by one player. And that's going to proc a mirage timeout because why wouldn't it? You need to slow down Spiff. He's getting away with way, way too much right now. Not only a triple kill on that last one, the quad originally, and really like the triple, that makes a lot of sense. Everybody trying to oversee things. The quad was the thing that blew us away. Uh, and honestly, just boiling down to that last round and, you know, trying to keep hyper focused on Mirage's game plan there, not exactly the greatest of straights working their way in, trying to coordinate things to get that plant down inside of mining links. They had some oversight, but not exactly the greatest when it comes down to it. They lost some key bodies upstairs through that verticality, and that allowed the remaining members of Beast Coast to overwhelm them on that retake. Fun fact, by the way, uh, Beast Coast have obviously played three defenses, and they won each of them with each win condition available to the defense. First one was the defuse, second one was elimination, third one was time. I track that sort of thing, for any of you curious. And now we know, and are all a little more, uh, little more knowledgeable after that fact. I don't know, it's cool, I haven't seen that before, and if I have, I didn't take note of it, and, uh, Spiff is 7-2. That's the, kind of the takeaways for me at this point in this half. Mirage also taking a tactical timeout to try and recover some of that lost momentum. Is it Cathay defense? Sure, but no rounds picked up at this point. And finally, a round loss that, sure, Spiff got a 3K, but wasn't really a big play that was the ender. It was still a big play caused in round three by Mirage having their angles and positioning shut down. I love that, of course. Love the big 3K from Spiff, and that, if that doesn't get shut down, we're in for a rough round four, but still, Mirage, we're definitely on an actual downward trend in round three, and now need to start picking up some rounds. I don't think I'm ever going to uh, forgive Spiff for making me scream like a little uh, schoolgirl during that one. Uh, Listen, sometimes real. you got 
Sometimes a player hits a shot, you just gotta let out a little giggle. Like, you can't help it. I just, I just tee heed a little bit too hard, you know? Yeah, I, dude, you would not believe how cutely I just cover my mouth with, like, with just my three fingers. Like, hee hee. Reloading so cute. <laughs> Man, he just gives me butterflies when he does stuff like that, you know? I don't have, I, I, I don't have, I don't have a follow-up. I, 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 I ran out of jokes, I'm sorry. I, I could, I could audibly hear the smirk through the mic. Right. <laughs> Listen, like, I can me, only, nice. I've got, better. I've got a, listen, I always have a couple jokes, like, you know, loaded in the chamber, but I don't have infinite ammo, unfortunately. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that for later on down the line, but, uh, as for B's Coast, it looks like they have unlimited angles to try and assess this map from on the defensive end. They're gonna send it back to the same site, but a little bit of a different mix up here when it comes to some of these offs. Got some extra traps coming in here and hold things down. Get them be back onto the Thorn. And a nice pickup coming through. Hat actually going to trade himself out to be able to take out Spiker and falls to Spiker's uh, Claymore there all at the same time. Urkel's going to at least be able to pick up Doc, and this is going to be one of the first big advantages I see him going in the favor of the Owls. And not the first time Mirage have gotten the opening pick either. It's uh, actually first two rounds Mirage were both able to acquire the opening pick in both, but a fat lot of good it did them, unfortunately. Now here, as you said, 4v3 established. They have the ability to start opening up those floorboards very quickly, and they got to this very position in round one. It was just a very, very clutch defuse from Mr. B that ended up giving Beast Coast the round victory. So there were a lot of great things from Mirage early on. It's actually probably Beast Coast, even despite winning round one, that are looking to change a lot of the mistakes and make a lot more ground on denying this vertical pressure from Mirage. And Mr. B, with the pulse, with that C4 you can see on your screen, that is the method by which they're trying to do it without forcing a retake. You can hear the sludge work going on. So tantalizing for Mr. B to try and reassess this. I get to plant down through a different means. I think he's rotated off as well. He was just over behind that bookshelf. The case now going down. They have to have cover on this. There's four people alive. They don't, but Mr. B is going to go down. The plant will go through, and that should be the round. It will indeed. This Mirage will take that advantage that was more than likely the biggest one we've seen out of them so far and quickly transfer that into a round win right after that timeout too. So very well done from them to take some time, reassess things, and hit their mark. That was also pretty much how round one was going until Doc uh, started successfully retaking the top floor and Mr. B ended up defusing the bomb in a 1v1. So Mirage is repeating a lot of the steps that they had already laid or taken in the first round but following through with, with what I think a lot of us expected the result to be going back to the first round that we saw on Cafe today. So very good place to start out on. And it's now the, actually these next bomb sites where there is more work to be done as Beast Coast will not try reading a second time. They'll go down to Kitchen where, again, it was a very big play that I doubt we'll see replicated again with Mirage all peaking spiff. Not one at a time, but all in a straight line that led him to easily get three kills and then eventually a fourth. So maybe Mirage a little bit more coordinated on that clear of the VIP shield after establishing a 5v3 as they did in round two. And again, we'll be in a much cleaner position with probably relatively little that needs to be changed. A little bit of a different game plan here for them when it comes to the stop destruction too. Really like it, especially because we touched on Rim's potential usage on the top floor, or rather the mid floor here, right? To clear out things for the kitchen area. You can kind of hard focus on things like train as well as mining for those boogie drones to clear things out for you. They also have Rampy on one of his, uh, I mean, most hallmark operators that you can potentially get him on. It's going to be the buck. Let's see if their verticality amount at all now you remember this is the site where spiff went nucleosis here inside of vip and they're already starting to address this stripping away some of the material he has around him making him more easily accessible to the offense he is warded now though and that is a little mm -hmm. bit that, that is a key operator change that keeps the 1.5 but he's able to Changing peer through mics. those flashes Angles might be one thing, but secondary utility might not make too much of a difference if he's able to use that gadget to get to the right position. Mr. B moving to freezer this time instead of playing around the red stairs position like he did in round two, giving Spiff quite a bit of intel on these players playing either outside the garage or later on on white stairs vertical, taking the second floor position of effectively the same spot. Both him and Rampy, the duo clear before, were able to find that clash and might just be able to find it again, but Skeleton Key not able to land a shot. Throw too much damage on Mr. B and he can't switch in time. So the clash forced to back out, but still alive. 
seem to be counting his lucky stars on that. This clash probably going to end up being one of the more pivotal operators when it comes down to the execute from Mirage. I'm going to continue stripping up all of these floorboards, and this right here is the, be uh, the beauty of the Boogie Drone. The Roomba action is it'll soak up all of the floorboards in the entirety of mining on both sides. This is something that used to be a buck and sledge job as they would have to work up here tirelessly for right, right around you know 20 to 30 seconds just to oh, get yeah. their angles set up, man. It takes some time, especially because some of these panels you actually have to pop inside the site isn't the easiest thing. And that's actually something that only Sledge can do to this day. So some of those angles still only capable of being accessed by him. 45 seconds remain. Mirage have set things up, Links. Bring us through these last handful of seconds. The only thing they have remaining really is this VIP player and that Kiba barrier on the freezer door. Mirage want a backside take, but there's still slightly more work to be done. But down goes Spiff. No big 4K this time. Mirage get that first bit of control. Now if they can destroy that Kiba, they're well on moving on in. Clash taking down the next to follow. Hat 2, 5v2 now for Mirage. And this one looks like a very dominant win lined up in the next 15 seconds. Tristan does pick up one, and Doc starts to retake up long bar, but he's on ADS at the moment, cans and swings. Maybe a gunfight, he wins, but that's another time and another place as the last defender is cut in half in the bomb site. Kansas is able to shut that one down. No overthinking out of Mirage on that one. Simple clear of the mid floor, crossing their T's, dotting their I's, making sure there's no roam game, nothing too effective up against them to try and thwart their game plan and it goes off without a hitch man they're able to open up the entirety of that top floor make it to where the defense has to be really worried about verticality pouring its way in on top of them and then immediately assess everything going on over inside of vip wrapping around towards whiskey as well as coat check and they take down every single bogey that even chooses to step foot in that area whether it be somebody with a gun or somebody with a shield it didn't seem to matter for mirage they were able to lay them to the sword all the same now, trying to make sure to shore up this score line as much as possible before switching sides. With how clean those two attacks have been, it seems like a 3-3 might, or seems very likely at this point. East Coast did have a solid third round and third defense, but with the other two being very individual and being very difficult to replicate, once it gets to just basic Rainbow Six, Barrage have looked very, very practiced on their attacks. East Coast repeat the bomb site. No, they'll move back to mining and dining. So fully repeating their site rotation, but now very different results, very checkered on all of these options. I don't think Mirage will need to change things up too much from their previous take again. Maybe not losing as much of an advantage on that vertical clear, but even then they were in a position to get the bomb down, just covering it a little more effectively. That's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it too. Not all just done inside of cannon fodder, but inside of objective play as well. Team strategy. I've always found so awesome about Siege. It feels like other FPSs and their natural respects, kind of more chess or rather checkers oriented. Siege, definitely more chess when it comes down to it. Only a few uh, tactical FPSs that make me feel that way and Siege definitely one of them. So it's gonna be a top clear here for Mirage as they'll start with their opening. Be the top floor opening here, Links. We'll see what they do with their pawn structure. Try and get these drones in. Get rid of some of these uh, Kiba barriers that they're using to clog up some of these longer lines of sight. The cans and getting rid of this, just so we can see over towards Pixel. I'll apply a flash to that too, just in case there is anything to burn over in that space. And there is a couple ADSs there. Hold on to that so his Christmas player can swing in on stage. And that's all she wrote there. They've gotten vertical in on top. And now they can actively try and help with this top floor. Vertical's had a decent time in this position so far. He's been able to d take the gunfight with the pallets player or the player inside a cigar, usually win it so far in this matchup. So again, my concerns for Mirage at this point in the clear aren't too high. Where's our Beast Coast that I'm still looking to to say, all right, you guys have had a lot of cool moments, but can we see it a bit earlier on than the very last seconds? Not for Mr. B to be sure. Then we are shut down right below the train hatch. Key room now cleared out for Mirage once they move down to the bottom floor. Uh-oh. Do need to worry about the bomb sites itself. Spiff's cover on white, the white stairs window also now shut down. So a lot of pressure can be applied to him once Mirage start to move over and maybe take those white stairs. But with how low time is remaining, 
Might not be something Mirage really cares about. Might instead just hold that Christmas side, move down the red stairs, get a plant inside of mining. But either way, if that's if they want to go a different way, their time's running out to change up. Yeah, it feels like they almost need, just need to build up a head of steam here and go for it. They've stripped away quite a bit from Beast Coast. Yes, they still have some angle play working its way in, but you do have the man advantage. You've at least brought some verticality into the mix here. Now it's time to try and flirt with this case links and try and get the defense to respond to you. You can get some good coverage, especially with the amount of people that Mirage have up. You can more than likely just kill Beast Coast as they try to work their way in and stop this plant. That's exactly what they're going to try and do. It's three versus five, make it a two versus five from BC's perspective. Tristan's worked his way up to the red hallway, but they can't stop him either. It's only going to be Doc with a kill for now. Tristan, can he find much? He found a lot on Nighthaven the other day. As of right now, it's not looking like it's going to be a possibility for him. It will for Ramp Dog and the rest of Mirage, though as they will quickly take out BC on that execution. Wasn't the quickest getting to it, but when they chose to pull the trigger, man, with those bodies falling. And, and overall, despite, I think, uh, Beast Coast having a far more memorable half, I think Mirage looking a better team overall in that half more consistently, even in rounds they lost, able to very, very often either get the bomb down or get into a position where they are physically trying to complete the act of planting but might have been shut down at some specific occasions. That is, that was very clearly, I suppose, Mirage's win condition of that half. And coming away with a 3-3 after a very, very strong start from Beast Coast, at least in terms of the hype, not looking too bad with that ending, especially now moving to the defense and having that Mira they'll bring out in the first round. I'll probably be pretty happy, uh, especially with those big rounds coming out of Spiff, to be able to not only pick up two rounds and make sure you're at least at an okay split, right? Uh, being able to tie things up and make it three to three, where these defenses could end up leading you to a re uh, regulation win. Got to be excited for the Mirage fans at home, but I mean, it could go back and forth. We know that the offense on Cafe, although difficult when it comes to clearing out things, there is definitely some teams that can make it look quite easy when it comes to taking it to the defense on this map. So we'll see what Beast Coast are capable of. We don't want to count them out of it just yet, but obviously Mirage do have a slight advantage as they will have the defensive side. We'll have to see how things start off here. Hopefully we see some good rounds from Beast Coast to again get that uh, four-way tie for technically sixth with everyone at five points. If you're just a fan of chaos, that's what you're hoping for, and that needs to start in round seven. Cocktail being that first bomb site. How Beast Coast will deal with this mirror setup is definitely the part I'm most curious about. Team so far this stage, despite Mr. B's pretty stellar reputation as an IGL, despite his inexperience at a tier one level. Again, last stage just being his first one. He's often well-renowned for being able to coordinate great plays, great clears with his teammates. But since then, that coordination on Beast Coast has been very lacking in this stage so far. And Cafe is a map when you're attacking where that needs, needs to be strong. Not even clearing these mirror windows, but look at these Kibas, the deployable shields, and then just consider the long angle that Mira has set up on the cocktail side of things. You need to be strong on your utility clearing and positioning on this map, and Beast Coast, they need to level up their game from these previous play days. Well, hopefully for Beast Coast's sake, they're able to evolve here. Take a little time, a little reflection. Trying to apply it on the next game day. It's the name of the game when it comes to trying to review things here for these respective squads. That rock in a hard place, but he can also work this out. Does have the potentiality of two kills, only going to be able to tag up Rampy a little bit. But for Mirage's sake, they're doing a pretty good job of delaying as of right now. I love that positioning there from Rampy. He's going to work his way into dark, and although at first glance it doesn't seem like the greatest thing for a castle, he does have that super shorty secondary. So if he can stave off elimination down there long enough and they go for something like a plant and long bar, he could be the one to stop them from underneath with that secondary shotgun. Gonna have some trades back and forth now as this timer is eating at Beast Coast, is forcing them to try and bull rush, get ahead and work out the rest of this map, get some picks, find a home for this case. get the first pick onto Spiker, but Tristan falls very soon after. Beast Coast, 20 seconds left. Don't have a clear way in just yet. The utility clear I mentioned earlier, bathroom position still solid with a mirror window. Cocktail still solid with a mirror window. 
East Coast are just walking into the setup of Mirage, and once the defense goes to retake the top floor, the castle doesn't even play vertical, just walks up red stairs to deal with the attack from behind. I mean, Mirage's setup just wasn't even countered in that attack. They just played their positions the entire time. And that is professional grade defense out of cafe and out of Mirage right there, Lynx. That's exactly how you want that to be played, huh? You would just want to take your time, hit those solid positions. They got the early pick there. They knew there was no info game going on in the mid floor. So what do they do? They just wait patiently for Beast Coast to actually strike and implement every single tool at their disposal uh, and well, getting rid of the entire offense, a beautiful rotation out of Rampy, uh, Rampy. He didn't even wait for the plant because he didn't necessarily need to much rather be there when the entirety of Beast Coast is facing outward and he can quickly try and shut them down from behind, just like we saw. And not only that, but that's also case control in his hands right there. And he was also the first one to get a pick in that too. So pretty crazy that Rampy and all of Mirage were so tight knit on the timing there as they were quickly able to take out the majority of Beast Coast roster in practice less than a second. Ten left. And thankfully for them, they'll be able to play a pretty similar strategy, at least uh, in theory Five for this one as well. Three. Mirror Windows, I think, yep, set up in the exact same positions. Castle Attackers being brought as well. Almost the exact same strategy through and throughout. The operators have changed hands a little bit. But the same bathroom mirror, likely with the same castle barricade, maybe? No, Bird Glass has actually used all of his, so no castle barricade on that bathroom position, but the main part, those mirror windows are all very much the same. There's Epinauts to worry about, too? Oh, rough go at it for Beast Coast. You gotta bring a lot of utility to clear all this. Most definitely. Every single one of those pieces of utility, respectively, have their own level of annoyance to them as well. The castle barricades will get stripped off of the white hallway, but I don't know if the one still exists on the door. I'm going to assume that it does as of right now, so I still have to clear that for the bathroom. But, I mean, like you were saying, there's just so many different things going on with the utility strategy leading into this for Mirage that will make your head spin, especially when you add in that layer for Fenrir. You know, you might clear out everything, but if you miss that, uh, that, that fear gas just over in the corner, all of a sudden you can't see on your swing, and you're more than likely going to lose out simply because of one piece of utility. So Beast Coast have a lot on their minds right now. And the key thing is, especially for Mr. B, right? He has to try and find a way through the thick of this. Yeah, he's got to keep a lot of the, the pieces oh. in order, a lot of the factors in his mind. He started on that wide stairs, and it's actually not even utility to start. Wow, Tristan, unfortunately, not the one to get the opening pick. Doc goes down right at the same time. But thankfully, because of Tristan, Beast Coast do not go at a disadvantage. They're able to keep it out of 4v4. Have gained maybe a little bit of ground now that they've cleared out that pixel player, the warden down as well. So moving across that top floor a little bit easier as it is mining and dining. If they do want to stop on that top floor, they could, but Mr. V has found that cocktail is entirely clear. So the entire second floor is in the hands of East Coast. Now that's just what they make of it. Reloading. Cover me. It's going to be Tristan's last breaching round headed out into the floor. You got us angle for him for red 90. Let's have to worry about a couple of other entry points here from the defense that could potentially swing through. Things like Hell Door, as well as the 90 hallway, all occupied by Mirage right now. And this is going to be pretty hotly contested back and forth between these two coming down to the wire. We're going to get the hatch open. It's 30 seconds remaining. This is up to vertical to try and stop this leg of the assault. And this is where it could all matter most to both of these teams. Who wins out this next engagement? It's very low time. They're going to have to try and commit to a plant eventually. Trade's going back and forth again. Mr. B is going to go down. No real coverage when it comes to the oversight on these flanks. And they're going to lose another one yet again. It's down to Spiff. Our earlier clutch with the one versus three. We'll be able to at least get one. But on very minimal time, I don't think that he's going to be capable. Doesn't even have the case in hand. And with that being said, that's going to be the round going to the defense of Mirage. Very well done there for both of these teams, but Mirage just that much better. They stood at the gates, they were prepared, they were ready, and they were able to shut down Beast Coast without even having an opportunity to try and plant that case. And an another very solid defense for Mirage, and I was about to say, I think if you want to stop... Uh... Stop the bleeding now. Sometimes the kind of rule of thumb is, all right, if you lose three rounds in a row, then you want to take the time out. But when a third round lost in a row at this point would be match point for Mirage, it's best to take the time out now. 
try and figure things out. The attacks have been very, very slow from Beast Coast. And even in that round, you might think to yourself, well, hold on, Lynx. They were above reading, above dining. They had top floor control with a minute and 20 seconds left. That seems pretty quick to me. And part of me would be sympathetic to you, especially when you want to get that vertical control. There's a lot of time left to open up those angles, use them, find different positions. That much is true. But when moving down to that bottom floor, how much were they able to find out those positions? How much were they able to isolate, either get a pick or push a defender back? Really not that much. So sure, maybe they made good time in getting that second floor control, but afterwards, did they make good time in using it? Did they use it really that much at all? Not really from Beast Coast. And that's a similar story to what happened in round seven as well, with not clearing out that top floor, not being able to push very far to the front. Now, maybe with Kitchen, be able to remedy some of those mistakes after the timeout. I think it really plays into what you were touching on with the operator lineup was, uh, for Mirage in that last round as well there, Lynx, because the operator lineup that they brought was practically just an overload of utility, right? It, it made it to where Beast Coast had to pay attention to every little minor detail, and I think that they could have kind of gotten lost in that. We saw a lot of Beast Coast trying to address a lot of those different issues in the, around the map, including Mr. B, uh, you know, repelled off on the side of White Window, but nothing really doing for them. When it came down to crunch time, they were still bumping into things like fear noxes and, you know, other things that were still thwarting their overall game plan, even though they took the entire round to try and stop that from happening. So with that being said, this round is really where you're hoping to see them try and address some of these issues. Maybe try and carve out just the one key portion of the map that you want instead of trying to address it all at the same time. Monty might be a good way to do that. Just walk on in, say, all right, this is the spot we're taking. Bakery, maybe for example, this is the spot we're taking. But those boogies, thankfully, you can do it, but Rampy in a great position to shoot the tank on the back of the auto breacher to stop it in its tracks. Now, it has still opened up a hole in the floor to look down on the bottom red. Probably one of the more important positions that auto breacher could have opened up. So Rampy spot still a little bit more difficult to hold, but with a second one out, you know, the co-check position can be revealed as well. Rampy might not necessarily in a position to shoot that one, so Spiff can Attack move into top the red. But Mr. B hopes he can make progress inside a bakery. But Mai sitting behind the deployable shield, not feeling very pressured at the moment. Only one set of frag grenades on the attack. It's Tristan holding them, and not many other tools held by Beast Coast to deal with that player. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. You can see Beast Coast. Really want to try. There is absolutely no way that well, that is the way that that round is going to go. That's there just... is no way that Beast Coast have spent half this round droning things and no one knew there was a frost mat inside of Bakery. You... That can't even be Hold possible, on. right? You're telling me, you're telling me they see a guy Bakery, and they didn't drone Bakery. Man, <sighs> I'm not mad, Lynx. I'm just disappointed. I mean, you saw it on Mr. B's face too, right? He literally said, he literally said, oh my God, a frost mat. I mean, I mean, same man, same, but like. <laughs> Retweet. Just, yeah, yeah, plus one on that bump. But I mean, you can see Bisco is trying to put together the pieces here at that point. I mean, with what, just one, one thump. And suddenly they're they're all shook. You can just yeah. tell, you can tell from the demeanor of the characters. We don't even have to see their faces, hear their no, voices. Just, we're seeing, like, we're seeing two people stuck outside the double door, stuck outside the window. I mean, Tristan has Diffuser. That alone should be, that should be alarm bells in your head right there. Smith does get Spiker. All right, maybe we have something. The VIP push trying to work out. Kansas even fallen all the way back. So they've taken control of the long bar. Slothy now about to face a lot of pressure inside of VIP. There is a dreaded frost mat underneath that window, so hopefully Beast Coast are careful. But they have acquired, despite the loss of the Monty, some significant control. But one player, Rampy, playing close on that door, is able to get two big kills, but not before. Mirage lose a very solid lead, but still maintain at least one body ahead of Hat and Beast Coast. And one pick doesn't matter. Three rounds in a row for Mirage to get to 6-3. Dastardly, dastardly for Mirage. They are allowing Beast Coast to practically just fall to their own devices. You know, they're setting everything up and allowing them to walk into these traps. In this, in this case, obviously, literally, it's just a complete oversight of the situation that is being presented to you in Bakery. And like, 
I, I really like throughout my casting career, I have always tried to be nice about these things when it comes to like strategy, things like this, because siege is just really damn difficult. So at much the end of the day, on. guys, there is so much stuff that you have to be thinking about. And for us to just sit here in a chair and for you at a home to sit in your office chair, your couch, sit wherever you are right now. And for us to sit with this camera point of view and be like, well, what the hell was this guy doing? That's just yeah. the dumbest, most brain dead thing you can do. It's right. Not Link? necessary. But, but at the end of the day, unfortunately enough for Beast Coast, it is the truth of this situation that they have, you know, befallen to. They run immediately headfirst into uh, a very lackadaisically placed trap that's out in the middle of the floor, and it completely wraps that round up for BC. They did not know what to do until the very last moment where they decided we have to do something. And although they actually did have a chance with that, not gonna take that away from them. They definitely got some considerable kills and had a moment there where they could have pulled it back across the line. It never should have started that way in the first place. And I think that's a, I think it's a credit to the players on BC that it went from what seemed to be not an unwinnable 5v4, but a very defeated 5v4 into a 1v2 and 1v1 mm -hmm. by the end of the round that ha ended up winning. And Beast Coast have the caliber of players mechanically to bring back those advantages. I mean, Spiff 11 and 7 right now, and he might be dead, unfortunately, but Hat also is a very talented player who can pull off some big moments. But when you're going to get up against people like Rampy, like Vertical, like Kanzen, those types of executes that you might get away with at a lower level, it's not going to be as consistent here. It might work out sometimes, but not nearly as often as it used to. Rampy's also, by the way, on the defense, been having an incredible half so far. Huge multi-kills throughout, I believe, the majority of these rounds. Triples, doubles, everything, it seems. No double here, but gets the first pick on the hat, then is immediately traded out by Doc. But that was the attack's only source of frag grenades. So dealing with, thankfully, there's no magnets or... ADSs of any kind, but dealing with these pixel positions is going to be a little bit more difficult if you want to get a kill from them. Almost definitely. Not only that, just frag grenades, good for business when it comes to the offense, right? You never know what you're going to get with those things. Could be a piece of utility, could be two big kills. You never really know. So definitely going to be sorely missed for Beast Coast's sake. And Mirage going to be very happy about the results that they've been getting so far on this defensive end. And honestly, just a little bit of the veteranism, I'd say, getting shown from Rampy Vertical and Kanzen. They just know when to push the buttons, Lynx. They are so very patient right up until the moment where it matters most to Beast Coast, and then they strike and take it all away from them. And that has been a routine occurrence throughout this. Now, Beast Coast have done it to themselves in some you know, instances, like what we saw in that last one, but Mirage definitely having a very solid strategy as to how Beast Coast are going to do uh, this. Oh my God, please. Oh, thank the Lord. Whew. I had to send some, I had to send some prayers upstairs for Beast Coast there for a second. That was... That was a little too close for comfort as three people are standing on a depth charge. Little, uh, little, little too many blue highlights circling that position. The dock has decided, all right, they're, they're trying to see for our back line. Let's push forward. Oh, Put a few bullets in the face of Slothy and the rest of Mirage, but hasn't resulted in a firm lead just yet. Spiker does find one, but doesn't come away with it with a kill. It's a 1v2, though. Beast Coast have an advantage they've sorely needed. Please don't throw it away like this, man. You've just gotten it. A few big kills early on. Don't let the game end here off a clutch of Mirage's own. Spiker sees him around the Kiva barrier, knows he's pushing up through the pixel position, rotates accordingly, trying to bait Beast Coast as much as he can, dodges the flash. Where is Spiff gonna push this? In through Freezer, close with the bearing nine. He's going to check this position. Does Spiker win it? Yes, he does! 7-3 for Mirage as they keep Beast Coast down way at the bottom. But they move up now to eight points in the NAL, a little bit closer to sixth. We'll throw it to the desk to break down another heartbreaking loss for BC.